time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Scent Vapor Hunting Scents, Killer Food Plot Seeds, Supplements, and Attractants, Cabela's, Spot Shooters, Antler Action, Family Tradition Tree Stands, and Badass Slingshots. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, everybody. Last show of the year. Last show of the year. Um... And here we are. Here we are. Thawing out. It wasn't too bad. No, it was cold, but I'm pouring coffee. Hey, hey. I already poured mine. Yeah, but I brought you a thermos. You did? You know what? There's nothing better than getting out. And was that not a beautiful kind of a sunrise? Hang on, I'm pouring my coffee. I know you are. You're letting everybody hear it. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it was, man. It was a, it was a great sunrise, man. It was, it was beautiful. Coming, it was coming up through the, the, the snow. I never thought... In my wildest dreams, we talked about going ice fishing this weekend, that I would be up at the butt crack of dawn, <laughs> getting up before daylight, actually, and getting out and going ice fishing. That was not the butt crack of dawn, I'll tell you that right now. I'll tell you what. Butt when, crack I of woke, dawn is. when I woke up, it was dark. Yes. Not, well, it's mm-hmm. been, yeah, well, welcome to my world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was dark. It was definitely dark. <laughs> but yeah, we did some ice fishing this morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, you and I got up, we went out and uh, gave Randy Duncan a call. Yeah, give Tim Ford a call. Couldn't cross Tim out. But we got Randy Duggan to Randy. come out. And, uh, and you you know what? It was fun. It's always fun to fish with Randy. You never know what you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates. And, and you know, we were already out on the ice, and, mm-hmm. we, could, we, and we knew exactly when he pulled up. Mm-hmm. Just, it's, it's just Randy. Yeah, right on. I, I looked, and I said, hey, that must be Randy. And lo and behold, it was. It was, right? Yep, he was rocking the hat with flaps and rocking the, oh, he was wa- the camouflage orange. The, the Linden hat with flaps. Mm-hmm. No, that was lug nuts. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was lug nuts. Yeah, it had a big L on there. But... Oh, I thought it was Linden. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's good. That's Linden, good. lug nuts. It's all the same. It is, yeah, right? So, yeah. But here we are. We went uh, last show of the year. Yeah. Talk about a few things. Um, show 445. 445. You know, you realize a year from now we're going to be rocking up on almost episode 500? Yeah, absolutely. And that's going to put us somewhere. I think we timed this out that we're going to have our like 500th episode. We might be at ATA. That or short, yeah, shortly, shortly after. Yeah, we're gonna it'll be, be real close. close. Yeah, it might be the episode before, after, or during. Who knows? But it's gonna be somewhere around. Right. There. So, um, but we were able to get out on the. We stopped at BB's Baits. Yes. But, oh wait, wait, no, no, you didn't tell the whole story. We stopped somewhere else before. Oh, <laughs> we stopped and got breakfast. You know, you are so happy that I got the wrong order. You're, you're like, you're like just <laughs> loving this, McLovin' it. You're right, you man. Are I McLovin am McLovin' it. it. We stopped at McDonald's this morning for breakfast. I was buying. You were, you know, and, and I ordered my usual. Yeah, no, you didn't. I guess not, which no. I thought was my usual. I could have swore I. It was early. I yours is number eight. Yep, it's always number eight. You number ordered number eight. seven. I ordered number seven, and you got waffles with uh, wrap wrapped up with eggs and and sausage. That's disgusting. <laughs> Oh, you got you a nice McGriddle. I can't stand those sausage and egg McGriddle. How how was how was the McGriddle? Ugh. I ate it. Yeah. I'm hungry. I'm mm-hmm. gonna eat it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Especially when I'm buying. Right. Well, that too. <laughs> Good thing I didn't order two. So yeah, we pull up. He orders, and I go, "Oh, you're trying something new today? No, no, I've got my usual. Okay. Then I looked in the bag. You looked in the bag and go, oh, "What is this? That's terrible." I'm like, "Uh huh. I told you, you ordered number seven. You didn't order number eight. See? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So anyways, we got past that disaster. My breakfast was yummy. Well, mine was too. I'm mm-hmm. not going to lie. The sausage, eggs, and cheese was good. Mm-hmm. Just not sandwiched between a waffle, yeah. pancake, or whatever it is. All right. Of course, my daughter loved it. Yeah. You know what? And we didn't see that post until uh, much later in the day after we'd already went live. So Right. So uh, Should have went live when you when you opened that bag. I yeah. should have proved a point. but yeah. No, no, no. You just keep pouring your coffee there, pal. I am. So we were able to get out this morning. Well, then we went. Then we oh went to God. BB's Baits. Okay. Yes, we did. That Check- was a trip too. Checked in with BB. Before that, you uh, your your truck got hit. <laughs> that and, was a trip. And you're just you're just pulling all out the, the mm-hmm. little tidbits. It was a great morning, folks. I still wasn't quite awake at that point. When throwing salt, don't hit my truck. Oh, yeah. and yeah. you hit my truck. Yeah, a guy was throwing salt, and he yeah he salted your truck. Yeah. Like, really? Can't miss the big red truck. Left you a little salty. Right. So. Really? Well, actually, you know, we, we ought to really take a step back. 
you know, until this morning when you arrived, we got over, you got over here, I got my stuff ready, but we had to get my shanty out. Was that a chore or what? That was a little bit of pirouetting. Yeah. With a little bit of balancing. I felt like we climbed Mount Everest. But we did it. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't that bad. We just had to no. Do, just had to do the usual. The best part is you knew exactly where it was. Oh, yeah. In the back corner of the garage well, piled, with a bunch of crap piled on it. Right. But at least we knew where it was. We didn't yep. have to take your garage apart to find it. No, nope. We just had to get it out of the back of the garage to the front of the garage. Yeah. But we did it. And it's a good thing we did. And it was a good thing we did. Well, you know what? Actually... In the morning part, it was nice. It was nice. Yeah, it wouldn't. But when it got about noon, one o'clock, just mm-hmm. before we ended, it was cold. It was it was blowing. But uh, yeah, so we 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 got the sled out, the, the shanty, mm-hmm. put it in the back of my truck. Got breakfast. Went got to breakfast. Went got, to BB's. Got, got some our truck bait. salted, and then we got our bait. And then we got our bait. So yeah, yeah. So then we went over to the Seven Lakes system, mm-hmm. and uh, we fished one of those many lakes in their area. But we pulled in, and lo and behold, we're the first person there. That was scary, dude. I don't know about you, but I was expecting a lot more. I was expecting people to be there. Right. And I'm like, "Uh Mm uh-oh. I'm like, okay, there's nobody here fishing. Well, especially from what I've seen this week. um, Last week at work at the TV station, we're on doing the news, and I I checked the Bay City Skycam, which is on the Saginaw River. I'm like, hey, we got got ice. There's ice on the river because I can see the, the snow on the ice. You know, it's not very thick, but I'm like, hey, we got ice. And within about two minutes of me saying that, all of a sudden, here comes a freighter up the river, busting all the ice. Blew the ice completely out. And I'm like, okay, well, there went that. Less than a week, actually, this week, yesterday, actually, two days, it was two days ago, I saw shanties on the river. Same same shot, same sky cam shot. And there's, there's shanties. I said, oh, my Lord, we've got a moving river. And it's been less than a week. We had a, a, a freighter go up the river, and you people are putting shanties out. You guys are idiots. Well, first ice is best ice. First ice is dangerous ice. Yeah, well. Especially on moving water. Right? Because, yeah, especially up there. So, um, it, what were we talking about? I don't even remember. That. I don't know, but we were the first ones at the boat ramp. We were the first ones out of the boat ramp. So, yeah, you said you expected more people. I was expecting more Me. people. I was expecting. Me too. I, I was like, okay. Then I started. Thinking, but then I saw where people had already gone out. So I'm like, okay, so the ice is, is thick. It's thick, thick enough to people are dragging sleds and stuff out there. So I'm like, mm, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right. But we, you know, that's we checked we, it. We checked it and it was a couple inches thick. So I'm like, okay. It was a good I, three inches thick. It was definitely three and a half, maybe four in spots. Um, the thing was, there's about three inches of good, good hard, clear ice. And then we had an inch, inch and a half of white ice on top of it. So had uh, what six eight inches of snow on top of it too, and that was insulating. It made it a little slick. So, and my uh, uh, my cousin Dennis, who just got back from the UP, says that uh, it was minus twenty. Oh. With the warmest morning out hunting was minus fifteen. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, so oh, chilly. your cousin's up. He's up at your he, camp. He was up at camp, and then he wrapping up deer season. Yep. Wrapping okay. up Deer season. So very cool. Eh, that's a little cold. Right on. You know, but uh, here I, I it expect was... a lot of people too. Because of that, because yesterday what I saw on the river, there was people everywhere. Well, I saw in Holly, um, the little lake, as, you, as you're as you going to downtown Holly, right. there was at least a half a dozen people on that small lake. So I was thinking, oh my gosh, right? you know, there's going to be a ton of people out here. Uh, here we are, first and foremost. Yep, sun just coming up over the trees. I mean, just at just the Just coming up, yeah. Beautiful had, morning. We did a little video work. Mm-hmm. Um, you were quite happy with the, the, the scenery and the shots you were getting. You know, it, it's what they call golden light uh, for anybody who's into photography or videography knows what that is but for those who don't the first first hour and last hour of daylight is the best light to shoot in it's just it's got this golden quality to it and it's just fabulous to shoot and actually that's what we caught today so we got out there and and hit it hard so right exactly and you know what it was it was one of those things that uh at that time it wasn't windy at all it was kind of nice no it was 10 degrees well, but it, after the last couple of days, it's pretty balmy. Yeah, yeah. So we were at least above freezing. Right. So we so, get out there on the ice, get everything set up, well, shoot some video. Call Randy. Call Randy, yep. Well, we were doing our videos and, and making sure, getting the video shots that you wanted. But then uh, we were able to, you know, we decided, hey, where are we going to go? Got the whole lake to ourselves. Right on. Lo and behold, as we're doing that, uh, another uh, uh, couple pulled up. Actually, two, two other, of, two two other people, people. Two yeah. other vehicles pulled up. About that time, mm-hmm. as we're starting to walk out to some spot that we picked, mm-hmm. just kind of just said, "Okay, here, yeah, let's check it out, see what's going on." Right, exactly. And then uh, they one guy came, walked right by us, and headed across the lake. 
and the other guy uh, we talked to never hunted, never, never fished there before. Right. So we kind of gave him the layout of the the lake as quickly as we could. So here's this, that, we, the other. Yeah. So he's like, okay, sure. And then he went on bold, went out there and chipped ice with a spud. Yeah. Whew, that's a long ways to go. Yep. But ours isn't that thick, so it's not too bad. Wasn't too bad, right? You're right. I did tell him, I was like, hey, if you want to borrow one of our augers, because we had two augers with us. Right. It's like, if you want to borrow one, you're more than welcome to. He's like, no, I'll chip it through. Okay. Yeah. He did come back later in the day, though, and borrowed it. He did. <laughs> when he, he started moving. He did come back later in the day, and, uh, hey, can I borrow the auger? Yeah, you can. Yeah. So he punched a few more holes, and he was happy. But uh, lo and behold, Randy shows up. Yep. We Then we decided, okay, let's move. Mm-hmm. We let Randy pick the spot. Yep. Well, I tried to let Randy, but you guys were too busy talking. You took me. off to go do something. Yeah. I went to go get my uh, phone out of my truck. Okay. And I was like, okay. I come back and said, what did you guys decide? Mm-hmm. Uh, no decision was made because you guys were reminiscing about whatever. Yeah, we're I'm catching like, up. I'm like, all right, let's go out this way. Right about here. So lo and behold, we started fishing. I'll tell you what, we're, we're bumping up on the first break. We don't want to spoil everything oh. here, so why don't we take our first break? Let's, let's do that. On, got, on the last episode of the year. Yeah, we've got, we've got on the ice. We're set up. We're ready to rock. So we're going to step outside. We're going to take our first break. We come back. We'll, uh, we'll get into some fishing. Be right back after this. PSE Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organic fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. We are back, and we're on the ice. Well, we're not on the ice. We were on the ice, but when we left you, <laughs> we were on the ice. We were on the ice. We decided to make a little change and, and kind of head to, kind of knowing where there's a hole, because we were in about six feet of water the first six, time. Six, eight foot of water, yeah. Yeah, and Roughly. then we, we moved a little deeper, mm-hmm. went to 12 to 14, and Randy was there now with us, and we kind of set up shop, and being in the shanties that we were, we kind of positioned them, so the wind was at our back and made it really nice. You, you kicked on the heater. Yeah, and uh, well, we left the front door open too, so I could take and. Uh, sorry, guys, I'm pouring more coffee. Yeah, you are pouring more coffee. Finishing up what little I got left here, and uh, so that way we could, you know, sit across from each other and talk. Right, even we, though we were in the shanties. So. Right, and you know, we talked and 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 we got the lines down and and we started catching fish. Now, granted, we we're catching you know the smaller size ones. Right, nothing, some nothing gills. huge, some some bluegills. But uh, you know what, Randy said, "Hey, I'll, I'll we caught about three or four or five when we started and then randy says hey i'll i'll i'll, I'll keep them mm-hmm. okay so started putting them on the ice started putting them on the ice for randy because he's going to take them home let his kids clean them i'm sure he's going to help but uh you know what at that time it was just about 9 30 10 o'clock we, you know we we're just starting to the weather wasn't bad at all we we're just talking and having a good time on the ice and fishing and starting to catch the little ones and getting a few bites there seemed to be coming and going yeah, we moved out in deeper water. Yep, we moved out in deeper water. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was fun. Randy, when he catches a fish, can give you play-by-play. And everybody knows about it. Right? <laughs> some we yeah. can't repeat. Right. If you were actually, uh, we, we did do some live streams We did, live stream we did three live streams from out there, and, and if you were on one of them. You might have heard them. Right. So that was pretty good. Um, but, yeah, catching those bluegills, you know, and it's fun. It's just. What do we wind up with total on the ice? Uh, I think. At least, from if I remember right, Randy said there was like thirty. Okay, there was thirty out on the ice for him. Sorry, I'm taking my hat off, man. It's it's getting warm in here. Getting roasty, toasty. Yeah, we didn't have that problem earlier. No. So so we had about thirty bluegill on the ice uh, from all little different sizes. Actually, we practiced a little QFMA. QFMA. Q 
QFMA. Is it QF? No. It sounds like QDMA. Right. Yeah. Quality Fish, Fish Management. Management Association. Yeah. Okay. You know, we caught some really uh, some smaller ones, and yeah. we let them go yeah. to grow. Let them go to let them grow. Right. Exactly. So we were having some fun out there. And Lincoln Rogan would have been proud of us. Absolutely. And if Lincoln, you're listening, hope you're proud. Yeah, that's right. But, uh, yeah, no, it was uh, a good time to get out there and do some fishing. Uh, like I said, Randy's play-by-play was awesome. Uh, we had some people come walking by. We had... Uh, well, the first guy that came up that we offered to auger to, he did come back. Yeah, he did. He's like, hey, guys, you mind if I borrow that auger now? I'm like, right. no, hey, no no problem. You know, it's like, yeah, that's be, you know, more than welcome. Go ahead. Right. You know, I'll offer some help to somebody out there and give them some pointers. And, you know, and then we sat and we started talking about, you know, the hunting and the fishing there in the park because he just moved back to the area. He moved back to the area from yeah. the Tawas area. And yeah. Kind of asking about the park and uh, shooting ducks and, and deer hunting. and mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, just asking in general, you know, getting the lay of the land. Because he just moved back here from the Taos area. Well, you know, being out like that um, for the first time of the year. we have You and I haven't been out on the ice together in, in three years now. So we, we figured it to be about three years when we went up over. I think Randy was right. When we went over to uh, Lake Fenton. Mm-hmm. And I remember we were, that. Yeah, we were out there. and We didn't have any ice, good ice last year, the year before last, down here that we could get out on. We were supposed to do two ice tournaments with Cabela's yep. uh, up in Saginaw on the river. And both years, uh, they canceled because it was too warm. And one uh, last year, they were using boats. Right. Yeah, they actually used boats. So <laughs> can't do anything on the ice when you have no ice. Right. So, you know, we it's been two years you know, two right. seasons. This would be the third season, really, since I've been out. And uh, and, and really, it's, it's, it's good. As the weather they're talking about, it looks like it's going to be cold for the next week. Yeah, it's going to be making ice. But, you know, sitting on the ice today, as, as time went on and we're looking down, we're fishing and jigging and talking, all of a sudden, the whole, it's not really a floor, but the whole ice area that's inside the ice shanty started getting Wet. W- wet water. You know, we had the heater going, but it, I don't know if it was so much that. It really wasn't melting, I don't think. You know what I think it was, actually? The pressure the pushing water up out of the hole. There's that. But then also, because the sun did come out, mm-hmm. don't forget, the shanty's black. Yep. So I think it was uh, the ambient heat yeah. of the heater, the sun yeah. in that square yeah. was just kind of melting everything in, in there. Yeah. Well, we weren't the only one. Randy had the same problem, and the yeah. guy that came over and borrowed the auger had the same problem. Right. So they were just, you know, that's one thing you got to look at. We were watching the ice the whole time. We didn't hear no cracking. Didn't hear no, but, you know, I, I did look at them like, yeah, I don't know, man. What right. Do you, what do you think about moving? Right. <laughs> but we were catching fish. You can't move when you're catching fish. Well, yeah, unless you go through. Right. So yeah. then you can do a little scuba diving. But, but you know, it just, we had, uh, as we were catching uh, fish and, and throwing them on the ice for Andy and, and just talking and, and, and the people walking by. The best one is when the, the, the two gentlemen walked by and how'd you, <laughs> you know, when, when when you ask somebody how you did and one goes. One's a teenager. One's a teenager you said, great. And the other guy goes, no. We didn't catch nothing. We didn't catch nothing. It's like, like yeah, I know what's going on there. Right. Um, actually, I, if I remember right, those are the two that I saw. I think they walked the whole entire lake. Really? They they actually started off on the other side of the boat launch. Okay. They, they jumped in uh, oh, there. Okay, I remember those guys, yeah. And I think they walked a perimeter of the lake. What? Really? Yeah. I was just like, hmm. Then the other gentleman who took off across the lake, he came walking by a couple hours later and he left. Yep. So I don't know, I don't think he limited it out. No, and as we were leaving, there, oh. there was... Quite a few people coming yeah, in. Yeah, there was a couple of guys. They were on a different lake this morning. Is that what he said? The the guy with the power auger? Yeah. They said they were at some other lake. Okay. And they got some, and then they had a power auger. And then um, when we were up on shore, there was another couple cars coming in. Mm-hmm. And when we looked back, there was uh, three shanties out there when we left. Okay. So, I, I don't know, maybe everybody was late today. Well, it's like we were talking earlier. You know, you expect a lot of people, you know, being the last weekend, everybody's off work, you know, generally speaking, not everybody, but most people are off work for the weekend. It's the last Saturday of the year, you know, like we talked earlier in the week, hey, let's go ice fishing this weekend. And you, then you start thinking, well, man, it was pretty cold, you know, and it takes time. As with us, we had to dig out that shanty. And you, if people have their gear put back, first time out, first ice, there's that whole that whole thing. It assembly? takes you half a day to get everything ready to go. That's I, what I did last night when well, I got home from work. Yesterday, that's what I did. I looked at my garage and said, okay, 
I know my auger's on the right side. I know my bucket's on the left mm-hmm. in the bag. He's like, okay. So then I went and walked, I walked to my garage and said, okay, here, here, and here. And uh, put it all together. Put it, okay, here it is. But you're right. It's just that first time getting out there. And we were uh, uh, getting out there. and We didn't use any tip-ups this time. We didn't use any minnows. We were just using no. wax worms and spikes. Just yep. having some fun. And actually, you had the best luck today. You and Randy. And was Randy using wax worms as well? Yeah. We were, I gave him the uh, wax worms, and I was using wax worms. I was using spikes, and I got I caught two fish. You did. I had bites, but and I, I really thinking back and wondering, the reason I like to use spikes is because they're a lot tougher. They stay on the hook. You know, they don't mush when you put them on the hook. Right. right? You know, and turn to a, a wet, gooey thing in your hand like a booger, you know, yep. on a hook. Um, but I also wonder if that made it harder for the fish to get a hold of it, you know, because it was a little harder. Maybe they just give up on it instead of pulling and tearing at it. And then, you know, that could be that, you know, because the, 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 fish are slower now. Mm-hmm. Just something to bite into. Yeah. And then uh, that could really be. But then again, you had another point. Is me and Randy kind of were in line, right? And then you were on my right side in the shanty, which actually put you three feet, three feet to the right. Yeah, and maybe we were on the edge of the weeds, on the edge of the weeds, drop off something. Yep, because we were fishing almost the same depth. Yeah, we were. I was coming back two cranks off the bottom. You come back, you know, about two cranks off the bottom. Right. So I don't know, but it's you know it's so hard to say. Yeah, you know, and then but I mean literally, you know, I'm fishing here, you're fishing just like we're sitting here, just like we're sitting here. That's how we're fishing, and it's like why you know why am I not getting hits here and you're getting hits there, and he's right in line with you, you know, and he's getting hits. It's I just I don't know. Yeah, it's you know it's one of those things. So off the right side of the boat, off the left side of the boat. Yep. (laughs) Well, and the the thing was too is is both fish I caught were dinks. Right. So I just wonder if some smaller fish were coming out to feed further. Maybe if we were on the edge of the weeds or on a drop off, maybe they were venturing just a little bit further, being smaller, having to come out and get get the food. You know, versus the bigger one sitting back. You know, it could be. On the, I don't know. I'm not a fisherman, so I don't know. You know, it's one half dozen the other. Right. You know, we weren't using any minnows. Maybe if we were using minnows, we would have caught other fish. Could have been. Could have been. But then again, I noticed when we were leaving, some guys were sitting some tip ups. Okay. As we were leaving, so I was like, hmm, interesting. But, um, yeah, we didn't use any minnows or nothing like that. Uh-huh. The other thing that I found uh, enjoyable today was when we were live live streaming out there, we were able to share a little bit of ice fishing with Tim C.S. from West Virginia, uh, one of our fellow Moss Yoke Pro Staff guys. Um, that you know, the, he's on the West Virginia team, and I think probably, the, I assume, the turkey hunting team. Right. Because uh, that's his specialty. And uh, But we're still, you know, we still both work for Moss Yoke. But we, we've been conversing back and forth his live stream our live stream right and uh he actually he chimed in today and it's like we're getting to show him a glimpse into our world of what ice fishing is all about and lo and behold we find out his wife has relatives and she's from michigan yeah from taylor michigan and so, so you know if they decide ever to come up in the cold weather months yeah we'll get them up here and put them on some some we'll, uh, hard water we'll let them walk on some walk out <laughs> well, some ice yeah so we'll, we'll get them to uh help drown some worms through the holes and then we were, we were, you and I were able to teach David Bog something. That blew my mind. You know, on the live stream, we're, we're explaining things to, to Tim in West Virginia. And as we're talking and conversing, we're showing how we set the depth, you know, how we find the bottom and then we, we crank back up and then how you can actually set on an ice rod, you can set the depth on the reel. There's like a little tab that you wind your, your line around. So that way it won't it won't go out any further, and once that drops to that point, you trip the bale, you're set, and you can crank it back up when you catch a fish and let it back out, and it's always going to be at that that depth. It's always there. But that tab, when we were talking about that, David Boggs, he goes, he says, man, he says I never knew that's what that. He says I always wondered. He said that never knew that's how you set the depth on an ice rod. Right. And I'm like, David Boggs, we we taught we taught him something. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the the Earth skipped a beat there. I I think so. It was. Uh, yeah. Hey, Cutting Edge Radio Network. Thanks, man. We appreciate you guys uh, chiming in here real quick on the live stream. So, but a uh, quick shout out to them. But yeah, it was uh, being able to teach somebody, a couple of guys something. I mean, David, number one, teaching David something to me was astounding. But right? being able to share a glimpse, you know, technology now is being able to live stream from your ice shanty, you know, and, and show people what you're doing, you know, somewhere Absolutely. else. Absolutely. You know, and, that, and that's, the, the, like you said, that's technology at its finest, man. It is. You know, like last night we were watching Tim down in West Virginia talk yeah. about turkey calls. Yeah. Today he's watching us 
ice, ice fishing. fish. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, you know, the, the other thing was talking about technology. I almost lost technology today. Yeah, hey, you almost lost technology. My phone, man. I thought it went down the hole, dude. I, and it was. I don't know how he got. I you went, must have missed your pocket. Yeah, I went to put it in my pocket. I had because I had coveralls on, you know, and I was taking and putting my phone in into my hoodie along with my battery brick. Oh, okay. You know, so you're trying to. You, you, well, okay, so that's what you're trying to do. Okay, I. So then you must have did that and then missed your pocket. Well, I, I had it in there. Or did it, it slip out of your hoodie? Well, remember, I went out and uh, uh, I had to use the the little fisherman's tree. Well, actually, the ice. Right. So okay, I've taken care of business out there uh, uh, behind the shanty. And oh, did you get lucky? The only thing I can figure is, you know, at that point, it slid out of my hoodie and, and went down in between my bibs and my pant leg. Right. You know, and when we get, I got back in the shanty, I'm just trying to, I'm like frantically searching for, where's my phone? Where's yes. my phone? And I had to have you call it. Well, I called it and it started ringing and we're kind of looking around. I'm looking at you going, well, it's ringing somewhere on you. So hopefully it's not down in the hole. You know, well, the ice that, hole, that well, was my biggest worry. You've had that happen before. Yeah. Actually, a kid that we used to fish with uh, that used to run around with Mikey actually dropped his phone out of his shirt pocket. He bent over to look down the hole for something. And, and there went the phone. The phone went down. Yeah. And we're, you know, being 12, 14 feet of water, it was long gone. It yeah, would have been long gone if it would have yeah. slipped out of your, your boot. Yeah. Well, and that's, we're trying to figure out, well, where is it? And then eventually I'm like, well, it's, it sounds like it's in my pant leg. It was. Your pant leg was ringing. So I reached down and it's within an inch or two of falling out of my boot, between my boot and my, and luckily my boot or my pant, uh, my bib legs were frozen solid. We Yeah. When we got back here at the, at, at your house, it, your bottoms were frozen so yeah. luckily, that might have stayed, or else it was going to end up in two places, either in the water, on, on top the of ice. the ice, yeah. or it was going to go down that hole. Yeah. So I, uh, yeah, I was frantically searching for the phone. Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. got to love technology, man. Yeah. So, well, it, uh, at that point, I thought it was gone. <laughs> You're right. So speaking of gone, we need to uh, step outside and take a break. Uh, let's do that. All right. We're going to step outside. We'll be right back after this. So what do you do when you've completely redefined the way bows are engineered? When you've reached the pinnacle and the band starts playing your victory song, you start a revolution out of thin air. Introducing the all-new PSE Carbon Air, engineered with true carbon technology to be the lightest high-performance bow in the world. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organics fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Back third segment of the show, everybody. Took a second here. We had to do a little reboot of the little reboot machinery. It's uh, maybe it's the end of the year. It's it's tired. I think I think you're gonna have to give it, give it a, a bath and kind of. I'm about ready to give this computer a bath. All right, anyway. <laughs> but uh, you know what? Uh, we we talked about ice fishing the first two segments of the year, but I think we need to finish up because last week. We talked about the first six months of the year. Yep, yep. So wrap up the show talking about uh, the last six months. Last of the six year. months of the year. So we're talking July on. Right, exactly. You know, we we uh, we're, we were uh, baptized into tournament shooting with Dan. Yeah, that was a whole treat. We talked about that last week. That yep. was in June. That was in June. Um, and then going into July, we were doing um, archery classic at uh, Cabela's. At Cabela's, right? right. Yeah. And, you know, we we. Uh, which actually, we didn't do anything because we had the grand opening the first weekend of August, August of the new Cabela's in Chesterfield. That's right. That dude, that week was unreal. I mean, we I was down there. I went down. T- I think it was on a Tuesday. You went down. That was VIP day. Was it Tuesday? Yeah. Okay. Went down for that day and spent uh, three or four hours in the store. Then we went down Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, or not? Uh, we were down there Thursday, Friday, Saturday for sure. Thursday, yeah, and Sunday. Because Saturday, Sunday was the days we were there. Okay. We were supposed to be there. Thursday, we went 
Yeah, for the grand opening. Or maybe, as, maybe it was Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. It was Thursday, Sunday. Saturday, Sunday. Right on. Thursday, yeah. we went as Up North Journal. Yeah, that was the grand and opening. And we live streamed the, the grand opening. Dude, that was wild. It it was pretty cool. I'm telling you, it was... Uh, there was a lot of people there. The way they open the store traditionally, like they always do, they have right? an archery, sh- somebody from archery. And shoot. this time, it wasn't a, quote, professional. Right. They actually pick somebody from the st- uh, an outfitter from the store themselves, an employee, yep. Yep. to do it. Um, Shot the target, broke the band, opened the ribbon to open the store. Right, exactly. And there was a good couple hundred people outside the store. Oh, there's more than that. The Dude, first, that place was packed. Was we insane. actually got a bird's eye view, which was pretty cool. Yep, yep. Um, and being right next to Selfridge, the A-10s were, did a flyover, mm-hmm. so to speak. Yep. But, um, yeah, it was that was a... A fun weekend. Met a lot of great people down there. You know, we we met a bunch of new outfitters. Yep. Uh, we met a, a, the the marketing manager at the time, uh, George, mm-hmm. and uh, got to meet him. We got to meet the new general manager. Um, opening day, though, after after the initial, that place was rocking. It was rocking. And then Saturday and Sunday, we actually, uh, we were there. We made appearances there on behalf of Cabela's. And yep. We were working with... Uh, uh, Vi- Ralph and Vicky Sanswello. Ralph, Ralph and Vicky was there. Archer's Choice. Tim Andrus from uh, Rush. From the Rush, and uh, also uh, Tom Nelson. Tom Nelson from American Archer. From American Archer. Yeah. So we got right to here in Michigan. Hang out with some great people in the hunting industry and, and become uh, a little more well acquainted with those folks. Talking and uh, you know, kind of rocking our thing down there. It was fun. It was a, it was a it was a good weekend. It was a blast. It, it was fun. You know, just. Hanging out with those at lunchtime, going in the back and having mm-hmm. some food and sitting down with them. Met a whole bunch of people, talking to young, talking to old. Um, the little guy? The little guy wants to be a bear hunter. Wants to be a bear hunter, yep. to, Yeah, their family follows us on Facebook. You know? yeah. it's, it's really cool watching that kid. I, I'm going to drop him a line here saying, you know, ask him how his season went. Right, <laughs> you know? exactly. Because that's what he, he wants to grow up and be a bear hunter. That's what he wants to do. So. Yep, you know, and... and that was a great weekend. We're now uh, working out of that store uh, for Cabela's now. Mm-hmm. They've, they've shifted us from Saginaw down to there. Yep. But we'll go back to Saginaw if needed. Yep. Um, and that was the beginning of August. And then uh, towards the end of August, uh, Jim Beasley's. Yeah, Bowfest. Bowfest. And, you know, Jim did not too shabby there. Working, and, worked with Dan Yasa there again yep. from PSE Archery. Right. He, he was there and... Uh, Hung out for the day. We had the Up North Journal tent. Yep. We had the archery game from Cabela's that uh, always a hit. Yep, absolutely. And uh, But, uh, yeah, it was a, a good month of August. And then we roll into September, and I got to plant food plots again. Right. And I went up, actually, I went up Labor Day because now my logging project has ended. Mm-hmm. It gave me the first opportunity to get in, and, and I had all my... Um, Seed and my um, lime and stuff. Oh, your fertilizer, and fertilizer all and stuff. Okay. I I I had to put it down on the ground, and that was my first opportunity to get up there and do that. So Deb mm-hmm. and I went up there for Labor Day weekend, and um, through some, I was just hoping to get something green to come up. Right, my expectations were zero. So uh, I went up Labor Day weekend. Uh, we used the four wheeler. We we did the best we can. We broadcasted the fertilizers. We broadcasted the seed and. Uh, that's where that ended. Mm-hmm. And believe you me, I was quite ecstatic when I went up in October to see green. Absolutely. Well, I, I, I wish we had green that lasted. <laughs> our, <laughs> our deer just totally destroyed all of our, our food plots. Right. You had green that couldn't get above two inches tall. Yeah, they just kept mowing it down, you know. It's, 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 that was the story of the whole season, it seemed like, for us. is uh, And we've been dealing with that for the last couple of years, you know, just too many deer, too many deer. So we're slowly trying to correct that problem. Well, that's the thing, right? We, we've talked about this for the last almost two years now, mm-hmm. um, talking about um, how you're doing QDMA and how I'm actually, I've just started this year by getting the property logged, getting some food plots in, mm-hmm. uh, doing some things that uh, better it helps out everybody, helps out the turkey, the deer, the birds, right everything. On. So, But that led us into October. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, I was able to go up for my bow hunting week. And my oldest daughter, Kelly, yeah, she lasted all of 45 minutes of hunting. (laughs) Talking about getting the job done quick and being done. Yeah. The first day, well, we went up there, took care of business. The first, by the time we said we're going to be hunting, it was the first evening of hunting on Monday. Lo and behold, she's out there 45 minutes and shoots a six-pointer. 
then she was done. But it was her first buck with a bow, mm-hmm. and she shot it at a probably about 22 yards. Uh, interesting shot. Ended up shooting it at the base of the neck, which kind of cut the juggler. And it ran, and ran about 100 yards. Uh, it was fun tracking that one. Uh, you look back it out, and, you, you know, tracking it, and it just got better as it went, and we were able to recover that deer after about 100 yards. It's uh, when, when you go in and, and make short work of something like that. Um, yeah, she made short work of it, all right. That, that makes it, it makes for a good feeling for the rest of the season. It's like, okay, we're not eating tag soup again <laughs> this year, you know. Right, exactly. So that's my biggest worry going into the season was what – it was going to be like the expectations, you know, I just, uh, I didn't go in super confident this year. Like I, I have in the past, we just weren't seeing anything on trail cameras. Yeah. You weren't seeing bucks on camera. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and problem I was having, I was seeing all, uh, because I chose the, the, uh, combo tag three and four on one side up in the UP. Right. I, I can't shoot does. Right. So we couldn't shoot anything, but only thing we were seeing were everything less than, um, 10 different spikes, it just, the deer were there. Mm-hmm. They just weren't big enough to shoot. The only one we did see sh- was able to shoot, Kelly shot it. Right. That right. week. Right. So, you know. But you just took care of business after that. Right, exactly. And that, you know, that, that was our October. Mm-hmm. You weren't seeing anything on trail camera. No, I spent a whole week up there actually um, hunting. And, well, the, and I went, I did go up for a weekend in the middle of the month. I saw two deer <laughs> and a whole weekend, which I was just like, man, what is going on here? Um, nothing close enough to, you know, either one. I mean, I could have shot one of them, but it was just like, it was just a little dink and it's like, it's not what I'm there for. You know, there's no purpose in that. So, you know, you just kept watching trail cameras and, uh, trying to put a game plan together going into rifle season. And then I spent that whole week up there that last week of October leading into the first week of November. Right. A lot of rain again. Um, it has actually got me rethinking what I want to do. This is three years in a row. That uh, that about that same time of the year, last part of October, I go up and it's rained three years in a row, like for a straight week, and it makes it for really hard hunting to sit in a tree stand. I, I don't like I don't like bull hunting in the rain. I don't I'm wanna, not a, I'm not a fan of it. To tell you the truth, because blood trails get uh, washed out. You know, if you're tracking, and, it, and it's not like you can you can deal with snow where yeah. it, it, you can see it. Right. You know, with all the different colors of fall. Mm-hmm. It's like it's tricky. It is. It's very tricky. And if you wash that blood trail out with rain, and we had we had some good rain, so it I just didn't have anything within shooting range. You know, there was, I, I had a couple deer I could have shot. It's just it wasn't what I was looking for. You know, and I'm not saying buck wise, even doe wise. You know, we had some young does that, that presented a, a shot or two, and it's just like, eh, it's we're here to kill the old does. Yep, and we're here to shoot the bigger bucks. So. um I spent a lot of time in stand, but it just it just didn't materialize. But right. I did I did get to hunt with David Box. You did, you, yeah. He you, came up and hunted with me that last week of October, which was really nice. It is, and you know, anytime you can hunt with David Box, yeah, 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 you can learn so much from that guy. You know, yeah. So uh, that that was a good time, and then we roll into rifle season, right? And then you you headed off to camp. I headed off to camp. Yeah, you got the job done quick. Uh, well. I... <laughs> Well, we get up to camp, and lo and behold, it's cold. Mm-hmm. No big deal, except when your pipes are frozen. <laughs> that seems to be a running theme this year with with your camp and my camp. I tell you what, it was it's it, the we've had that camp now. I'm going to say 15 years. About okay, never had the problem, and I just had this discussion. Oh, no big deal. Eh, big deal. Yeah, got up there, frozen pipes. It took us a day and a half to get that all put back together. But I was able to finally get out and do some hunting. Yeah, I remember. I called you. How's it going? I'm playing plumber right now. Right. You know, my cousin was measuring. I was cutting, gluing. It just made for an interesting day and a half. Yep. But once we got that set, we set our sights on hunting. Mm-hmm. So we got out, and um, lo and behold, uh, first um, first day, I was able to get out there with the crossbow. Mm-hmm. Um, first morning, I was able to actually get out there, and I, I shot an eight point with the crossbow. That was nice. An hour in the stand, maybe an hour and a half. Was able to shoot, connect on an eight point. That was nice. Didn't go far, which made it really nice. Mm-hmm. But we had snow, right? So the the if I could have tracked it, it would have been no big deal. But it didn't make it thirty yards. The PSE did its job. The G fives did its job. Nice. So I was able to recover that real quickly. Uh, I took care of that. Um, that was Monday of the week. Opening day of rifle was Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday. Morning, uh, my cousin shot a six point, so I said, "Okay, I'll come out and help you and help you get that." We recovered that deer pretty quick; it didn't go anywhere. And then uh, I was able to go help out another uh, a relative, resituate his blind, 
and get that all set up and, and say, you know, here you are, you're, you're good to go. And then I went and sat back in my blind, and an hour later, I shot another eight point, this time with a gun. So needless to say, it was a good three days. Absolutely. And then uh, I was done. I was tagged out. I sat with my cousin the rest of the week, pretty much. Um, and then we, we came home. And so that was, you know, it's amazing. <laughs> all this hunting in within a week, mm-hmm. it, like bang, boom, 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 boom. So uh, we ended up getting another uh, seven point that week. So we took four bucks that week. Uh, in September, my other cousin shot a bear. So uh, he was Good up, season. Yeah, it was. You know, he shot a bear west of our cabin. Um, so it actually, was it wasn't a bad season at all. That's good. Nice. You know, and that that ended, that wrapped up my November. And then y- you actually at your camp kind of was behind last year's quota of what you're trying to uh, accomplish. Yeah, you know, last year our quota. You know, we we kind of did a trail cam survey uh, last year, and we we wanted to take 25 doe out. And uh, and we took 24, so we you know for all intents and purposes we met our quota. And you know we had there was some issues with some of the uh, people wondering if we shot too many. Well, you couldn't even tell we shot anything because this year we were just covered up in deer again. And actually, after doing uh, uh, several surveys and, and averaging out what we were seeing, you know we figured we needed to shoot 30 does this year. We wanted to bump it up, you know. Well, because just exactly what we said. Yeah, your food plots are getting. No taller than this. Right. And our browse line, the deer browse line, is, is it's high. It's head high. I mean, hind leg head high for deer. There, there's no deer browse. It's 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 becoming an issue, and we needed to correct, start correcting this. And that's why we hit them so hard last year. But uh, we did some things differently. You know, we're, we're going to try to target deer or does during bow season. And, you know, I'm the primary the primary bow hunter at the place. Yeah, you are. And, and I just I didn't have opportunity. You know, I mean, I put up five six five or six tree stands and you know we've got some shooting houses that have uh windows that you can shoot out of we got plenty of places to hunt but it just in playing the wind and, and trying to figure it out it just it never worked out where well, we could shoot any and plus when you're up there bowing it was raining and it was raining yeah on top of that so you know it was just a really bad bow season so we go into rifle season and uh you know with nothing on the ground at that point and we made a decision consciously amongst all of us that, okay, you know, we don't want to blow the buck hunt up. So let's go ahead and, and hold off until after that first four or five days of rifle season, then start smacking the does. Um, you know, I hunted hard. I could have shot, I could have shot a doe that first week, but I chose not to, cause I was waiting for a buck. I seen four antlered bucks. Two of them looked pretty nice, but they were in and out so quick. I really couldn't judge them. I uh, seen a lot of little does and uh, we had some people that started taking a few. Overall, we took 13 this year off off the place, and it's like, man, we're like 50% lower than what we even wanted to be at. Right, exactly. So, you know, now we're, we're, we're looking at it, it's like, well, what are we going to do? We've had uh, some other people come up and, and try to help us out, and they're not seeing anything right now. We figure we've got an issue around there, there's some nearby people that, that are probably baiting and pulling deer off because everything's locked down right now. The, the snow's froze. The fields are locked down. There's really not a lot of food anyway. We're the only ones that really put food plots out, so... We're dealing with that issue. There's, they can't get to the food, so they're going where there is food. They're going where the, where the, the yeah. dinner table's open. Yeah, we're not even seeing coyote tracks anymore, and we were covered up in coyotes. So right, that kind of tells you the, the food soft mo- mo- the yeah. food source moved off. Yeah, exactly for coyotes and deer. Both. Right. So um, we did go up. Uh, we had our doe management hunt. We brought four kids up from uh, Indiana. You from, saved the best for December. Yep. Yeah, we brought bring these kids up uh, and, and give them an opportunity. They, they're from Backwater Legacy. And this uh, this is a reward for the work they do down there. Yes. They're chosen by their peers. And we bring four youth up, and they get to doe hunt at our place. Yep. And uh, I go up, you know, as a guide. But this year, I it, during that hunt, as muzzleloader hunt, I actually took two does. So, you know. Because you're using that bump stock. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Let's see where we're going with this. Yes, I did. I killed two does in less than two minutes with a, with a muzzle loader. But it's possible. It, oh, hey, you know what? You just got to be a quick reloader. That's right. You know, when I shot the first one, she dropped. The second one standing there. I'm like, hey, you know what? I got a hot barrel time to reload. And I reloaded. And there's the second one. I'm like, and she's turning, walking off. And like, well, go on down to the stand where I put the this youngster down there with his dad. I put him in a stand. I'm like, go down there and get shot. Been down to zip my backpack up, look back up. She turned and came back. And I don't know why. If it's curiosity. I think it was curiosity. I, seeing I, me move or whatever, you know, I don't know. But I'm like, oh, no, you don't. Pull rifle up. Boom, dropped. She fell right next to the other one. I mean, 
it, With, within 15 feet. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it's like boom, boom. And they're like 20 feet from the two track, you know, you know, it's a uh, tag and drag up there, put them on the trailer and go home. You know, Right. Exactly. You know, it, you, you didn't have to fart it. No drag trailing. Them. You know, that was kind of nice. No trailing and no dragging. You know, it was great. So, and not only that, you know, that's the first two deer, first of any deer that I've ever killed where I didn't have to gut them, you know. We, we, oh, yeah, yeah. You made it an educational moment. That's right, you know. And there was another a guy that was there that took a doe. So we had three deer down that evening. And we put them on trailer, got them up, and got back to camp. And it's like, you know, let's see if these kids, you know, want an educational moment. Because there was two of them that had never gutted a deer before. So, yes, they got their hands bloody. So, But it, it was good. an educational moment, right? Yeah. I tell you what, we're bumping up on our last break here. Let's take our last break because there's more to this story that we just found out last week. And it's the, and it's the end of the year. And it's the end of the year. So we're going to take our last break of the year. We're going to step outside. We come back, we'll wrap it up. So we'll be right back after this. I shoot PSE because I like one pin to 40 yards. I shoot PSE for the perfect combination of deal and performance. I shoot PSE because you can shoot lighter poundage and increase arrow speed. I shoot PSE for the fastest bows on the planet. I shoot PSE because my livelihood depends on my bow. I shoot PSE because better engineering makes a better bow. I shoot PSE. 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 Experience PSE. Experience performance. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organic fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Back last segment. This is it. 2017. This is it. The last segment. We're never going to do another segment in 2017. We're going to have a ball drop. <laughs> Good. Have the, the big chandelier or whatever. We, we yeah. Have, we, yeah, we'll we could do something. Yeah, maybe an antler will fall on us or something. The arrow yeah. drop. <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 But uh, it was a good year. It was a good ending of the year. Yeah. It actually, it was a, it was a good year all around. Well, we had you know kind of going back to last segment what we were talking about. Um, the thing we do at our camp. Was, especially with the does. I mean, I, I try to do this with all my deers. Take them in, have them checked. Except for when they're closed. Do we want to get on a soapbox right now? No, let's <laughs> avoid the soapbox because we've all been there. All right. Well, lo and behold, as we're coming back home, we're, we're leaving camp, and I go by the DNR check station, the main headquarters for the, the northeastern quadrant of the lower peninsula, and they are open. So we stop and we get our three does checked. You know, another educational moment for the youngsters. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and these younger these youngsters, being from Indiana, can mm-hmm. see how another state handles things. Yep. So they got to watch all that and what we do and how that process works and unfolds. And, you know, we got done with our deer check. They take the heads and we send them in because in the area that we hunt, we've got TB. Yep. So we want to check our deer for TB. And they give us a little tag and then you go on the computer and about, he told us, that was on a Sunday afternoon and he said... Our results will be in by Friday. Okay. So I get on the computer Friday when I get back home. I check. Everything's good and clean. No problems. My deer's at the processor. And, uh, you know, I give the meat to the other deer to... Right. To, you, you gave uh, one, of the, one of the does to the, to the yep. youngster that, yep. to take back to Indiana. Yep. So he, he had meat to take home with him. Um, but I took took mine into the processor. Didn't really have time to mess with it. And it was frozen. It was frozen. There, yeah. So I just took it over. Long story short... Um, the guy who shot the other doe, he, he called me one evening, like, you know, that following week. And he said, Hey, I just got a letter from the DNR of Michigan. And I'm like, really? Well, what'd it say? He said that my doe come back a suspect. And I'm like, suspect of what? Right. <laughs> he goes, TB. And I'm like, no way. I said, dude, I checked. I, cause I had the numbers and I checked his deer. And when I checked mine, his said that it was negative. Mine was negative. Oh, both of mine were negative, you know? And I'm like, that can't be. So I got online real quick and I checked his number again and it said suspect. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. Why in the world would they put up negative and then change it to suspect? I, 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 to this day, we don't have an answer for that. And I don't understand why. Hmm. 
Interesting. Now, now here's here's the deal. We're waiting. They said six to eight weeks. They're, they've taken the cultures that they took from the lymph nodes of the head of his doe, and you know they're seeing if they can grow it in you know into that. Uh, I think is it, it's a bacteria. Uh, TB yeah. is a bacteria. Yes. So they're trying to grow this in a petri dish to see if it is TB, TB. or if it was just sick and had whatever else. Okay. Know? So long story short, we're waiting for those results to come back. In the meantime, him and I are talking on the phone, and he said, you know, he said, you know what No, we haven't thought of yet? And I go, what's that? And he goes, remember after we gutted the deer that night and we went back to camp? And as soon as he said that, I knew exactly what he was going to say. I said, yeah, we ate the deer heart. And he, I said, oh, man. He goes, yeah, and we, we ate all three of them. You know, that was the first time I ever tried deer heart. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, and it was good. So, okay, now you start playing all these scenarios in your head, and you're, you know, you're playing mad scientist. And, <laughs> right. Am I going to get bovine tuberculosis? And and so I immediately get online. After I, I got off the phone with him, I'm, like, Googling as fast as I can, <laughs> you know, symptoms, you know, um, you know, deer, you know, deer TB or bovine tuberculosis, uh, trans- right. transferred to humans. And can you eat deer heart, you know, uh, with a TB infected deer and all this, you know, long story short, come back. Everything's going to be okay. Um, they say you can't get it. You can't transfer TB to a human. Yeah, but you know they say cook the meat thoroughly. Yes. So don't eat it raw. Right. Right. So, but you know, I'm thinking, you know, there's always still in the back of your mind. Oh yeah, that you think? Thought of it. There's a chance that it, it could make the jump. You've heard of people, you know, if you're cleaning a deer and you got a nick on your hand, it gets into your blood. It can get into your bloodstream. So you know, I'm thinking of all these different things. In the meantime. Your deer's at the processor. You've paid to have it processed, and maybe you have or haven't picking it up yet. Why does it take so long? I mean, I, I know why. There's time delays in between. Well, because they got to get the the head shipped down to Lansing, where they do the. Yeah, yeah. We talked the animaling. In They're depth doing thirteen hundred a day. You're right, exactly. So get in line. Yeah. So you know, it's not something they could. You wish they could do it right on the spot, kind of almost. To me, looking back, it's more beneficial, I think, for people like us who normally. I didn't do it this year, but normally butcher your own deer because it's going to save you the money. Number one, uh, if you spend the money on that and it comes back TB, TB positive, you didn't spend the money. Yeah, you know, what are you, are you going to eat it or are you not going to eat it? I mean, right. I, I I don't know. You know, you know what? I, I've seen different pictures of different types of of, of the TB. It, These deer were did, clean on the inside, dude. Well, we, well, that's the thing, right? That one we seen just over here. The pictures of the yeah, one northern was, Oakland County, northern. It, you, Okay, if you looked at a deer and you saw that, it is infected with it. Would you would you eat it? No. Exactly. So like you said, here yeah. you are looking at a deer, and you look at the rib cage, it's it's clean as can be. Clean as can be, clean as a That's whistle. the first thing I do when I look at all my deer. Yep. Well, cuz you're there. Yeah. Right? It's like, oh, rib cage is nice. Yep, the lungs were were clean as could be. Right. So, you know, it, it, yeah, and in my Kelly's October deer, it was so warm, I had to take it to the processor. Right. Yeah, you you're know? in situations like that. It yeah. Like, ah, okay, I got to get this done. Yep. Yeah, but you here you are. time butchering it right there you, on the spot. Right. You come back, and then it's like, you know, it, getting it taken care of, but at least you did the right thing. You took it in. You didn't, right. You didn't, oh, yeah. You know, you found out. Yep. You didn't. Well, we still don't know that it even got TB. You're still waiting for the final results, right? Yeah, they said it'd be six to eight weeks, and that was two weeks ago. Okay. So you're still looking. Four to six weeks out. End of, end of January. End of January. Right, right. So but, so everybody sits and waits, twiddles their thumbs. Yeah. I've kind of gotten over that mindset, hey, I eat a deer that might have TB. You know, once, once they say, oh, you, got, you don't want to be the first known case. <laughs> you don't want to be, yeah, case you, zero. You know, you, you've never, we've never had this happen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, guess what? It, it happened to me. Right? But, you know, then I, I look, okay, so what are the symptoms of TB in humans? And you start looking at that, and it's like, okay, well, how do they... Take care of it. You know, you take medication, and they take care of it, you know, yep. as long as you catch it early enough. Right, so. exactly. So um, that, that, that's been kind of an interesting scenario that's happened towards the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. You know, we've been we've been talking, we, we talked, Anna, about CWD. Yeah. We've been talking for years about TB. Yep. And, you know, and, and the, about the CWD, that's a big thing going on right now, even in the UP coming over from Wisconsin. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of talk on the internet right now. There about is it. a bunch of talk going on around the internet about it. And, and then and then you had this thing pop up with TB. Yeah. So it's, it's 
but it's my first experience with TB. Right, exactly. First hands-on experience with it. And so. it's not like it was very evident where you opened it up and said, oh, we got a problem. No, no. Well, and, and even when we interviewed Anna Mitterling uh, from MUCC, she talked about CWD, that, that every case that they had come back that, that tested positive for CWD, all but one of those free-ranging deer looked healthy. Right. So Looked healthy. You know, that's an interesting thing as we travel down this um, unique road of handling these diseases within our deer herd here in Michigan. Yeah. You know. My question is, Have has it always been here, and are we just now seeing it because we're testing for it because of the captive deer farms? You know, because it's mandatory for them to be checked. You know, and she couldn't well, answer the question. She, well, she said, we don't know. And, well, that goes right into the, to the next, into the cattle farms, right? Yep, yeah. So has it been here all along? Are we just now finding... CWD because we're testing for it. Colorado's had to deal with it since 1960s. Yeah. So uh, yep. they, they've been dealing with it, and everybody likes to go out to Colorado and hunt. Yeah. So. yeah. You know, and that's the other thing is, as I read an article this week talking about the big scare of CWD, it's going to ruin the hunting in Michigan. We're going to see our deer herd depleted. Uh, right now, I haven't, I mean, obviously, we do have more deer per square mile than there is uh, mule deer in. In Colorado, I mean, the density of deer is is greater here. Two different things, but but still, it hasn't. They haven't stopped hunting in Colorado, right? Or Wyoming. All you learn to you learn it. to adapt and live with it. Yeah, yeah. You just whether be smart. whether you you be smart about it, and maybe you have mandatory testing, mandatory yeah. check in. Yeah. I think we're just starting the iceberg, the tip of the iceberg here sure. as to how we're going to handle things and what's going to need to be done. Yep. And I'm sure the DNR has probably already got their hands, trying to get their hands wrapped about the whole situation. Absolutely. Trying to figure out, we've got this, we've got that, we got, you know. How we put these pieces of the puzzle together and make it better. Right. So. so. But that was kind of the whole year. Yeah. You know, and then here we are ending it. And actually, the story's not over for another few weeks that we know yeah yeah for us anyway right. for, that, for that deer yeah but uh well even you know looking ahead next week um i'm heading north you're heading north up to yeah. uh hillman up to hillman um gonna handle that and check that out and you're gonna see anna up there yeah anna dr james brucker a couple other uh biologists and dnr officials uh dnr is making an announcement at this meeting it's actually gonna it's, it's a co-op rendezvous Deer, right, deer co-op rendezvous, and uh, we're gonna, you know, hopefully get some information on some management, uh, deer management, habitat management. It's supposed to be an announcement coming out of there too, right? An announcement, yeah, and and hopefully if everything goes right, I'm I'm gonna be live streaming that. I'm, it, keep your fingers crossed. Right, we you, you don't know the situation yet until you get up there. If yep. everything's uh, the way all, it's supposed to be. Right. So as long as there's internet connection there. <laughs> Exactly. We will be live streaming. If not, then you might be recording, recording it, it for and, a later date. Yes. So, but obviously, when we come back though, that Sunday we'll be talking about it on the show. Yep. You will we'll we definitely can, be talking about that on the show next week. It's hard to believe that's a week from tomorrow. I know. Well, yeah. and, then, and when we and when we get done with that show, our first show of 2018, three days later, we're heading to Indianapolis. Absolutely, ATA. It's here. Uh, We'll talk about definitely talk about that next week, and then maybe I'll talk a little bit about what we saw uh, on, on social media when when things are thrown out there. <laughs> you want you want to get my quote out? <laughs> no, yeah, I do, but I'm going to save your quote to next week. Oh, because that it, it's it, a truth. It is. It really is. Uh, it really is. But I'm going to hold off on that. Okay. Because um, um, that it's 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 a funny quote, but it's actually. Truthful. We're truthful. Absolutely. And it was funny you mentioned that because uh, Deb asked me when we talked about this a couple nights ago on the phone. Right. She asked me, she goes, were you and Mike fighting? <laughs> and I kind of <laughs> laughed because, no, I said, no, we weren't fighting. <laughs> but it kind of made me think of exactly the what conversation, exactly. The, the way it went. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, but no, we ended, we ended the year um, going fishing today and, and catching Catching some fish. Did we harvest the fish or did we catch the fish? Well, we we did some catch and release. Catch and we, release. We, we did some let them go, let them grow. Yeah, there you go. Deer summit. I can't wait for the next deer summit coming up in March. Uh, that uh, isn't it. March, April, I think. Or is it April? I you can't... know what? We'll have to get Lincoln yeah. Roan. You know what? Matter of fact, that's a good idea. It's a good Need reminder. Get, get Lincoln Roan on here so we can talk about when that's going to be happening. I think they're nailing down the prices. Okay. I don't know if they got there yet. Uh, I think they nailed down the date. We can always look that up. But I think they're nailing yeah. down the price. It's going to well, be there in Mount Pleasant again. Yeah, and we're actually, uh, I'm hoping to bump into some QDMA officials this coming weekend up in Hillman. Right. You know, and we'll probably schedule some of those guys to talk. Maybe get a little more information on CWD or, you know. Well, yeah, what's ever going what's on. What's going on with that. State, right. So get a handle on that. Um, 
you know, in, I, I got to give, you know, give a shout out uh, PSE this year. You know, we, we got to shoot the Evolve 31s. You and I did. Best bow I've ever had in my hands. I mean, it, 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 we it, always it. say it every year, but yeah, they, you know, everybody just keeps making better and better stuff. And it just, it, it's so much fun to be able to, I've, I'm stepping back out again and shooting, shooting 60 yards pretty consistently this year. You right? know, that, that's been a blast. You know, a big shout out to PSC, a big Absolutely. shout out to Black Eagle. Black Eagle, uh, letting them fly true. We're we're uh, I used actually I was using the uh, carnivore crossbow bolts. Yep, and I got my uh, one of my eight points with that. Um, Nick Percy over <laughs> killer food plots. Killer food plots. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that good. stuff is so good the deer won't leave it alone in my place. And you're right. You know they they didn't even let it get two inches tall in there. Yeah. Morning. Luckily you had those grow cages to actually remind you that it was growing. It was growing absolutely. Uh, but yeah, it's just amazing. So yeah, we want to thank all those people that helped us out. You know, Tom's Custom Turkey Calls, who we bump into at the show every year. Yeah, we we bump. You know, yeah, we were using those in uh, for turkey season. Yeah, uh, shout out to him. Uh, definitely out to Cabela's, uh, letting us go into the stores and do our bringing thing. us into the stores, letting us do our things, letting us come out as Up North Journal. Yeah, uh, videoing the opening day, uh, we didn't crash their servers. <laughs> right. Well, we didn't use their internet. <laughs> right. Uh, but definitely a big shout out to them. Hopefully this year we'll do more. Uh, getting them out there uh, with Cabela's. Uh, stay tuned for that. And then... Uh, Wind scent checker uh, grenades uh, and... Uh, fourth arrow, arrow camera arms. You got to use that out there in... Fabulous uh, products. Fabulous The stuff. different bases you were able to use. Yeah. And you, all you had to do is take the arm with you. Yeah. I kept yeah. thinking... I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, I got to go out and get my, my tree stands down, my my braces down. You know, speaking of tree stands, Family Traditions tree stands that, uh, w- that I've used for the last couple, three years. Fabulous product. Love that stuff. And actually, I'm hoping to get a couple more here pretty soon uh, for this upcoming season. So, right. You know, and I, and I know there's other ones, uh, you know, people that that we probably forgot about. You know, G5, I love rocking their, their uh, broadheads, man. It's T3s. Just, used, yeah. I used them for the crossbow. Yeah, that's what I got uh, got on, on the crossbow that I was that my dad used this year. Yep. So, um, but best definitely a shout out to all our, yeah. our supporters that helped us out throughout the year. Um, Personally, I want to thank on my personal level, Vortex Optics, uh, best optics out there for the price and the warranty in the market. I'm telling you what, go check it out. But uh, they're on my rifles. I've got their binos, got their spotting scope, got their range finder. I'm telling you what, man, the stuff is phenomenal. I want to thank thank Vortex and uh, you know everything. The stars align right again. Everything uh, that we're looking at right now looks like uh, hopefully we'll be with them again this year. Exactly. So. So, uh, Mossy Oak, you know, uh, uh, Mossy Oak, obviously, we brand. We use their patterns. Uh, yep. We were using them today, even though we were out on the ice. Yes, I did. I had the tree stand. I had tree stand on, as well. You know, sitting in sitting in the ice house. So, right. which they now have fishing patterns on sh- shirts. Uh, the water patterns. I forget what they call it. Have you seen that stuff that they just come out with here recently? Okay, you've got me perplexed. No. Okay, after the show, we're going to go take a look at that because I'm telling you what, man, that stuff, it, 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 it's pretty cool looking. So you want to check that out. But, yeah, we want to thank Mossy Oak uh, for, you know, getting a great pattern and great product out there for us to be able to use and stay hidden in the tree stands. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, it, like I said, there, there's probably 18 different people that we're forgetting. Oh, well, absolutely. You know, and, and, you know, all the small little intricate things that we work with each and every day, you know, that we put out there uh, and use. And a big shout out to our families for letting us do this for another year. You know, my wife, Shannon, who will not come on to the show. She, we have tried to get around. We've tried to get your wife, Deb, on. And, you know, if it wasn't, it, it, even our kids, you know, our kids get in the outdoors with us. But uh, mine right now are points in their lives where school and family, you know, raising their own family. I got a little buck snort. Right. You know, that, uh, He's going to be traveling in the woods and the water with me here pretty soon. But, you know, our families, what we do takes time away from our families. Yep. And, uh, yeah, they squawk a little bit. We we get some grief for it. But, uh, you know what, for the most part, um, they don't say a whole lot, and, and they let us do what we do. And, and without our family supporting us, there's no way we could do this. Deb and I get out there during the summer. We get out in the kayaks. We're yeah. out there together. You have yeah. our little fishing competition. Yeah. You know, going at it. Well, actually, uh, I just told you today that, this coming winter, I'm going to a seminar here in Battle Creek. Oh it's yeah, you're, two day you're, seminar. Yeah, for, you're going uh, to that the burn thing. Yeah, it's a uh, prescribed burn workshop. It's talking about using your land and burning your land and and getting it to regenerate. So that scares me. Ever, well, it is scary. That's why I want to go to the workshop. I want to learn about it. But uh, trying to get my wife to go with me. There you and, go. And take a little mini vacation, so to speak. So especially 
January and February. Yeah, it's a cold time of the year. Need to, it is. Need to get away. So speaking of getting away, how about we get away for the rest of the year? Just just get out of here. We can do that. We'll wrap it up. So I'll tell you what. We also want to thank all of our viewers and listeners. Without you guys, we'd be sitting here talking to each other. So right, exactly. It's uh, It's been a great year. It's been uh, uh, a great time talking and all the questions and all the answers we've been able to give to you guys and gals. And uh, Questions. We love questions. Yep. If we don't know the answer, we try to find the answer. Yep. But uh, every Sunday, you know, obviously this is Saturday afternoon. Yep. But uh, stay tuned back for us uh, Sunday nights. Absolutely, yeah. We'll be back again next Sunday night and back on a regular schedule. But thank you guys and gals for, for tuning in and uh, supporting us as well. So, uh, and you know, and share the show with everybody if you can. You know, put it out there for us. Help us out. Get the word out. And, uh, and, and, and you know, a viewer like Charles, Charles Byram. Charles is on every week. Right. And uh, Dan Church. Yeah. Uh, Dan, he, right around the corner. He's right around the corner here. It's, it's, uh, oh, okay. Yes. Well, Charles is heading for the woods to freeze his you know what off. Okay. Well, you do that, Charles. Put some meat on the table. Dan, thanks for tuning in as well. We appreciate it. We're going to sign off, and we'll see each and every one of you again next, next year. year. Y'all take care now. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery. Black Eagle Arrows. Fourth Arrow Camera Arms. Wind Scent Vapor Hunting Scents. Killer Food Plot Seeds, Attractants, and Supplements. Cabela's. Spot Shooters. Antler Action. Family Traditions Tree Stands. And Badass Slingshots. Thanks for listening, and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.